So our next talk is uh, Madhur and uh, Shatadru, who will be talking about uh, logging in OpenStack and using machine learning to understand that. Welcome, and thanks for coming. Uh, so, hello everyone. Uh, so, I'm Madhur Gupta and uh, Shatadru is my colleague over here. And uh, today we have this talk, uh, Anomaly Detection on OpenStack uh, using machine learning, uh, particularly unsupervised machine learning. Uh, so, can I have the next slide? Uh, so, yeah, uh, we, we are technical support engineers, so we are, we are usually those guys when you or log a case and uh, you need assistance uh, to fix your issues. So we are the one who take over the remote session or uh, communicate with the guys uh, over tickets to help you resolve your issues on OpenStack or any other real products. So I, I'm working in uh, EMEA office in Brno and uh, yeah, for Shatadru. Yeah, hi, I'm Shatadru. Uh, so I'm working in OpenStack team in India and I work as a senior technical support engineer over there and we kind of work closely with customers, consultants and technical account managers, uh, solution architects to, you know, uh, get OpenStack deployed and provide solutions. Uh, so we'll move with yeah. next slides. So what are we going to talk about today? So uh, we're going to talk about uh, a particular, uh, well, a situation with OpenStack where that it uh, generates uh, too much logs, okay? And uh, at really lightning speed, you have a tremendous amount of logs, especially in huge production environments. So how do you, if you want to uh, use that data, uh, ingest that data and somehow, uh, you know, find anomalies uh, in that data, you, you know, you, you, you might have many services running in your instances, also your OpenStack services running. You have to somehow uh, keep track on the data uh, which is coming uh, at the same time in real time and find anomalies in that data. So uh, here we have uh, for anomaly detection, uh, uh, one solution that we are proposing here. Well. Uh, thing is to, to perform anomaly uh, anomaly detection this is not the only way to do it there can be many ways to do that you just need to get get some data sets on your uh, let's say if I talk about Nova service get some data sets on it and uh, uh, you can have your own programs you can define your uh, own thresholds and uh, you know statistical program to run on it and find uh, anomalies in it. So before we go further, let's talk a little bit about anomaly. So what is an anomaly? I will try to explain you with an example. Uh, let's say you have a web server. In, the, in your web server, you have uh, a weekly traffic about uh, 2,000 requests uh, per hour, let's say. And that uh, request changes every hour, okay? Maybe in the peak hours, it's, it's about 5,000. And in the off business hours, it is less. Okay, so every day that data, uh, that, that trend is uh, collecting, like every day you know that trend that, okay, this week it's about 2,000 uh, off business hours, in the peak hours it's about 5,000. So what, what would be anomaly here? Well, simply uh, something that you see, uh, see as unusual. Okay, so uh, you, you see that it's a typical, your, your normal business day and all of a sudden you see a huge spike, maybe instead of 5,000 you see 10,000. So that's unusual, something has changed, something has happened that has caused this thing, okay. Or maybe opposite, uh, the number of requests has drastically reduced, maybe, maybe 1,000. 500 only it could happen due to various reasons it could happen that uh, number of clients which are sending requests have reduced it could also happen that the server has increased amount of load okay now because of the increased amount of load it, it would handle less uh, less amount of requests and provide the responses to the requests so that's that's what an uh, example for anomaly I have Okay. How do you find that? You, you can definitely uh, create some programs to monitor that. You can set some thresholds on it that, okay, if it is higher than this, if it is less than this, that's fine. You can still do that way. But 
issue is when you have huge amount of data, uh, big data when you have millions of logs generating. Uh, and uh, in that case, writing is, uh, or having a simple program which is just trying to match up the thresholds is not an ideal approach, I would say. You should have a better approach over here because the data will change over time. Okay. Uh, well, I gave an example of 5,000 requests. Maybe uh, during some season, I, I don't know, maybe uh, I have an e-commerce uh, website, okay? And e-commerce website will have uh, different, uh, let's say, requests uh, over the time uh, in the year. Maybe during the Christmas time or some other time, there will be more requests in the, uh, in the, on the e-commerce website, okay? There will be huge traffic. So you cannot say that's unusual. It's usual, it's expected, okay? so. You can, it will be really tedious, uh, I, I would say complicated to write a job on it, to, to monitor and write uh, thresholds for it. For that you will have to analyze all your data uh, which is coming through and uh, define a threshold. Rather than that, the solution with machine learning would be that it will automatically uh, analyze your uh, trends. Okay. It will automatically uh, analyze everyday trends, weekly trends, monthly trends. Based on that, it will take decision by itself automatically whether or not uh, the requests which are coming are unusual or not. Okay. So for further, uh, well, this is what we are using for, for, for this uh, 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 for the solution, but this is not the only way. You can, of course, have your own program to have uh, unsupervised machine learning. But uh, since uh, in open source community, there are already tools which have made this job easier. So we are kind of uh, demonstrating how you could actually achieve them. So we we are uh, we have here OpenStack, which is generating the big amount of data on which you need to perform and analyze quickly on the real time your data. Okay, and so we we are using ElkStack which is where we are ingesting all the locks from OpenStack. And on top of that, there is additional feature on Elk that is uh, through XPack, one of the additional services through machine learning, uh, which will be uh, performed on the data collected from OpenStack and will give you the uh, analysis and reports and also alerts on your emails whenever the anomaly happens. Okay, uh, so uh, I'll be talking about uh, more specific, uh, you know, issues uh, with OpenStack. Uh, so uh, if if you have used OpenStack, uh, it, you would be knowing that you know it, it generates huge amount of logs, right? And uh, you know it has different components, Nova, Cinder, Glance, uh, for different things, and all of the components have different sub-components, right? Uh, for example, if Nova, it has Nova API, Nova Scheduler, Nova Conductor, and in, in new, newer version, it has Nova Placement. So, you know, lots of different sub-components, right? Uh, and, you know, it's, it's, uh, if you check, uh, you know, how many log files uh, basically OpenStack is generating, you, you would probably find out, you know, based on what other services you have enabled, you would find probably 100 to 150 log files, right? So how do you know, uh, you know, if something is unusual that had happened? Uh, what do I mean unusual? Uh, for for uh, in, in perspective of OpenStack, maybe uh, earlier you were, uh, you know, uh, spawning an instance, it was taking about one minute time, and now it is taking maybe five minutes. And that's a problem if, if you, we are in production and, uh, you know, we, our customers are kind of, uh, you know, trying to spawn instances uh, from a service-based portal or something like, like that. And, and it's taking much time, and that is kind of hampering the production, right? So, but uh, but it's very difficult. Which log would you check, right? Uh, uh, I mean, if some problem happens, then you have to you know go back and check what what's wrong. But how do you uh, you know know beforehand what, what what's kind of going wrong? So, th this is the amount of log files uh, in in one particular OpenStack deployment that is like normal three controller two compute kind of deployment. Uh, in e each uh, system, you will have like 150 logs, and then uh, if you have multi-site deployments, you know, it's, yeah, you are kind of screwed. Too much logs, and it's very difficult to, uh, you know, monitor the log files. Even if you have a nice dashboard that shows number of errors, it's kind of difficult to keep track of everything that that's happening, right? So, how do we detect something that is unusual, right? So, uh, we have uh, kind of ELK stack at our rescue. So 
uh, I, I will just uh, talk about a little bit about the specific components. Uh, uh, first is Elasticsearch. Uh, it's basically an API-based search engine uh, that will kind of ingest uh, all your data. And uh, so it, it's super flexible, super stable uh, that you can use. And it can work with TBs of uh, and even petabytes of data. And, uh, you know, it can index, uh, you know, your your unstructured logs. Uh, uh, basically, you have to push the unstructured OpenStack logs in a structured format. We will talk about it in a bit later. And once we do that, uh, you know, it, it, it will have a proper structured data and it, you can perform indexing and stuff. Uh, then we have Logstash, uh, which is the basically uh, responsible for collecting the logs from your OpenStack environment. For example, if you have a uh, controller node, you basically have to install Logstash in your controller nodes. And if you want to fetch logs from compute nodes, network nodes, uh, you may storage node, you will basically have to uh, install Logstash to collect the logs. Uh, you can have something else also, like uh, uh, you can have different kinds of beats, uh, like file beat, journal beat. Uh, so those are like uh, smaller uh, kind of components which you can use to uh, you know, gather lo the logs from the client systems. Uh, you also have a thing called Fluentd. Uh, if you if you are using rel based deployment, uh, uh, Red Hat is kind of shipping Fluentd as a client. Uh, but in, in in this case, we will be talking more about Logstash. Uh, another thing uh, we have Kibana. So now we have uh, logs that has been collected by Logstash, and we have all our data properly structured and indexed inside Elasticsearch. <laughs> Right, that that is running somewhere outside the OpenStack environment in a separate system, right? But you know, how do we kind of uh, view this data? This is basically an API based thing, right? It's very difficult to visualize the data. So for that, uh, we have Kibana in Rescue. It, it will show your data in a very nice format, and uh, you know, you will you will be able to see the machine learning component in the Kibana itself. So, okay. Yeah. So we are, we are a little bit uh, uh, tight on the time. We uh, uh, we have just five minutes more left for this talk, and the rest of the time will be for question answer. We will try to stretch up. Uh, so uh, we will not be able to show you uh, in this time uh, to how to you deploy Elk Stack on your servers, but we will uh, skipping up the uh, skipping up that part and show you how you can actually forward your logs uh, from your OpenStack instances, and uh, well. Uh, I'll show you an, also an example that usually the logs you have are in unstructured formats. They are just uh, text files. And how do you convert them into uh, JSON format and put tags along uh, with the sp uh, specific fields in your data and uh, forward it into your Elasticsearch? So we'll be uh, directly continuing uh, to the demonstration now. Uh, so for our purpose, what we did, uh, we deployed a uh, kind of uh, Red Hat OpenStack platform-based deployment uh, of OpenStack. It has a three controller and two compute kind of deployment, right? And, you know, we needed to deploy anomaly. So for that, we, we kind of, uh, what we basically did, uh, you know, we, we, we were collecting the logs and then we, we basically uh, run some, you know, 10, 20 DD pro processes. Uh, DDF0 and to DevNull to kind of do a uh, CPU usage spike and high load average and, uh, you know, for, for our demonstration purpose, uh, you know, to, to understand how accurately, uh, you know, this, this ELK stack is basically, uh, you know, finding the uh, anomaly, right? And, uh, yeah, we will directly jump into the demo. Uh, so this is why we have the Kibana dashboard, and uh, can you turn it into mirror mode? Yeah, sure.
So are you guys already familiar with the L stack? How, how many of you have already used it because it's so popular and for the data collection? Uh, so uh, here on the screen, uh, is it visible to everyone? Uh, should I zoom in it? Zoom it in. Yeah. Uh, well, this was the command just we ran before uh, you know sending out to sending out the logs to to Elasticsearch. With the command what we run over here, uh, clear the screen and uh, well zoom it in to clearly show. Um, so in this command example, uh, I have taken this Nova API log file, uh, which is just in tech files and uh, sending it to this log stash command. Uh, well, well, you can obviously run the log stash as a service uh, in the background and uh, it will periodically collect uh, your log files uh, in the runtime. But uh, just for the demonstration, we have used the one command over here which will collect the, uh, this log file and convert it into a JSON format. So it has already been done and uh, which the output you can see, uh, it has uh, made this uh, log file into structured data. For example, uh, the components which were in the fields which were uh, inside that log file are uh, are now set uh, inside the JSON format. Like action which was taken was get timestamp. Uh, what was the response time of the API call? What was the client IP? So all that data has been converted into the uh, uh, JSON format. How how did I do that? Uh, well, for that I had to define a, a Grok filter. Uh, I will not be able to cover up in in details uh, right now because the focus is on machine learning right now. So uh, there was basically a filter which I had defined in which I'm defining that what that each field inside the log file represents. Like for example, the first field represents the timestamp and the JSON tag I have defined in, in front of it and there are many more mm, for number, for uh, let's say the response time, the status, all of it uh, over here I defined it and uh, usually this is how uh, similar uh, format of the uh, log uh, API, API log looks like. So I, I just took the same format and using this, I defined it inside the Grok filter. I'm sorry, but I would not be able to go into that details like how that can be done. For if you want to do it on your own, you can use something called Grok debugger, which is available online for free. So you can use the Grok debugger and uh, define your own, uh, you know, fields inside any custom log files. So right after pushing the logs uh, using this command, I have all the data send it uh, to the uh, uh, my Elasticsearch, which is defined in the configuration file here uh, on on my local host here with the index of OpenStack. So let's go back to the portal of Kibana, and uh, I could show you over here the data which was collected uh, uh, from the controller node uh, where I have the OpenStack instance over here and uh, you would see um, all the data uh, here I can see all the logs and uh, they are segregated uh, into these fields in JSON formats. So here now I can use the machine learning on it. So it's it's really simple. Um, once you have your data uh, ingested into your Elasticsearch database, you can uh, easily use this uh, tool. Uh, but one thing you need to do is uh, also define uh, the data type. Okay, so when you, when you're talking about machine learning, you're talking about uh, analyzing the trends. And when you have trends in the graph, you have to have set those x and y values. So one of them will be your time, as it is a time series database, and the second one uh, will be uh, the data type as as number or integer. So um, usually you have to define. For example, that field I had defined 
using the grok filter called response by default uh, Elk, uh, Elasticsearch database will consider it as a string value but I had to define it over here kind of a mapping or type casting uh, which says that the field values which you are getting inside a response uh, should be defined as an integer so I can further use it uh, uh, in machine learning. So I would for an example uh, uh, create another job here using the OpenStack indexes I created with single metric. Uh, so what am I doing here? Uh, I'm selecting the aggregation here. So aggregation is like uh, how do you want to, yeah, I mean it's the uh, analysis function to be performed. It could be sum or count uh, uh, or mean. So in mean what I mean, uh, what it means here is that uh, it will uh, analyze the trend and uh, if the response is uh, less than what is uh, usual. It will uh, detect it, uh, uh, consider it as an anomaly. Uh, also, if it is higher than the usual trend, it will also consider it as uh, an anomaly. Uh, second is uh, the field. So usually, uh, I could have more fields over here if I will define uh, or if I will do more type casting with the other fields but for now in this example I'm using the response time in the NOAA API call as uh, as, pa as as the field okay uh, the, the third thing is the bucket span uh, is the time when uh, where you define the period like in every 15 minutes you need to check the data or you can set it to one hour so uh, in every 15 minutes uh, it will make an average of it that uh, in every 15 minute where there are about 2000 requests or so on you can change it as well so here i'm going to select uh, use openstack data which was sent through the controllers and uh, well here i'm just putting the name on the job and I can leave the job, uh, the description and groups over here and let's validate if everything is okay. Bucket span is also fine, time range is good. So while creating this uh, job, you could see that it will start from the beginning of the logs, uh, which was started, we started uh, collecting data for this uh, demonstration on, from 23rd July and uh, if you noticed earlier uh, there were some red lines they are gone now so what it does is that it, it starts from the beginning and tries to see how, what was the response time and based on that it, it creates uh, uh, it uh, well creates a typical response time from it okay in in the beginning maybe the response time was less and based on that uh, uh, using the same trend it sees that if there was some unusual activities in that so uh, we, we can see our red line over there uh, which which indicates an anomaly over there we can click on the view result and um, so this is the full graph so in this full graph uh, we have also uh, they have like sorted all the data uh, from by the so it has uh, sorted all the data based on the uh, uh, highest severity. Highest severity defines like the, uh, the actual anomaly and uh, the rest of them are like little bit uh, different than the usual data but not so much. But the, the, the red color which you see over there is the actual anomaly you see. So if I click over there, uh, I could see the details about it. Uh, it it basically assigns a anomaly score to it uh, from zero to hundred, and uh, I could see the uh, the more information about it, like what what happened in that time. So uh, you could see uh, over here uh, the field name response in this. Uh, well, you could usually see a typical response time which is like about 0 0.3 seconds, okay? But uh, anomaly happened when uh, the response time was, uh, was different than the usual typical time. So what's machine learning doing over here for us is that it's finding that typical response time for you. Uh, uh, well, also, not just that, it is changing uh, also. Uh, it's, it's, let's say, evolving by the, by the time. When you, uh, let's say, 
uh, in one year the data is something different and, uh, and after three months suddenly uh, the number of customer increases, the number of instances increases, so the data and the usual test response time will also differ. So it, it learns by, by the time also, it evolves itself uh, based on your provided data and uh, so machine learning is helping us to find the typical response time without defining a specific uh, threshold over here and it will change by itself. So when, whenever that happens, it will give you the timestamp and every other thing, you can use that data and uh, maybe have multiple uh, jobs running. Okay, so when you can have this job with the, with the API response time, you can have multiple other jobs maybe with the CPU metric. Okay, so whatever, whenever there is something unusual in your CPU matrix, the load average is different or something, so it will also generate uh, an alarm. Uh, there are further more possibilities that whenever uh, anomaly hap detects, uh, it will send you alerts uh, on your email, or uh, uh, create a ticket to your response team, which can take further actions. So, uh, you know, uh, so I, I will uh, talk something about, you know, why, why we uh, basically took response time here, right? So if, if you, uh, so uh, OpenStack has a uh, kind of architecture where, where you have, you know, different APIs, right? And uh, they basically talk to each other using API calls. For example, when Nova talks to Cinder, they, they will do a API call, right? So basically, uh, you know, kind of trying to find something unusual uh, in this particular instance, we are basically taking the response time uh, it take uh, f for for an API call to respond right after it gets a get request. So this is we, where we are kind of focusing and uh, basically what we did, uh, you know, uh, basically what machine learning uh, yeah, will do for you, uh, it, you will not have to define some any rule. You will not have to define any threshold. Basically, it will uh, kind of create a mathematical model and it will have a probability on what should be your response time at specific point of time and specific point of day and if the particular value is you know either higher or lower uh, based on how you have defined it uh, it will create an alert for example uh, this is the time when we basically ran some dd commands uh, what what happened in the controller nodes and you know the obviously the uh, response time of the api you know went much higher uh, so th this is why we can see them uh, there are some other cool stuff, uh, stuff that you can do with, uh, you know, this machine learning. Uh, for example, uh, you know, there's a high amount of network activity in your network, right? So you can basically detect that in intrusion and you can basically stop it before it happening, right? For example, uh, you know, there is a like thousand requests that is coming and uh, one of a sudden you, you are kind of getting some some kind of brute forcing you have like 10000 requests you can detect that using machine learning and you can you can stop it uh, so you can even use it for business analytics for example you have a e-commerce site that is running and uh, you know there there is a high amount of increase in uh, kind of unabandoned cart uh, you you can kind of detect that and you can probably send an email to uh, you know some manager or something or you can kind of create a ticket uh, so business analytics uh, intrusion detection and your all your regular IT job uh, currently uh, you know many of our customers are kind of uh, using uh, this to uh, you know see you know if the OpenStack is not performing well. So there are other stuffs you can do uh, in the in the normal Kibana dashboard. Uh, you you can see if there is uh, you know high amount of errors that is happening in a specific time, right? So that means some problem. Uh, maybe uh, you know there is a uh, your AMQP is not working properly. So you know you will have lots of error logs in all the components because they also use uh, RabbitMQ, right? Uh, or MQP protocol to communicate. Uh, and you know, somehow the RabbitMQ is down and you know, your complete OpenStack is basically down. So you will have too much, uh, you know, errors in all the components log and you can clearly see that uh, those kind of anomalies in the in the dashboard and you, you can, uh, you know, create a, uh, you know, apart from emailing, you can, configure it to, you know, ping on a Slack channel uh, of your developers or uh, you can configure it to send emails and open tickets in your uh, incident management. Uh, so there's lots of uh, different cool stuff you can do with it. Uh, so we have very short time. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we could <laughs> cover yeah. uh, all of them. Uh, but if you have any, uh, you know, questions, uh, you know, how you can 
configure it or how you can you know uh, what what are the uh, you know different use cases uh, scenarios where you can yeah. where we would learn, oh, want to yeah, use we'll it yeah we'll be uh, more than happy to answer them thank you so, uh, thank so you. Uh, if you have any uh, questions uh, we can take it i guess hi can you explain how do you select the machine learning algorithms to tell you what the anomalies are so uh, here, uh, basically, uh, you need to just uh, you know define the data uh, that you are interested in. For this particular case, we are basically interested in the response time. Uh, rest, it will take care. Uh, it will. Uh, you don't need to select any uh, algorithm or anything. Uh, it it will baseline the data. Uh, you know what is your trend? What what is the response time? Uh, you know in your regular response time, and based on that, it will uh, you know. You, you basically have to feed a good amount of data uh, until it basically understand what's your trend and after that it will automatically take care you don't need to uh, you know uh, bother about if it is kind of linear aggregation yeah it's basically unsupervised machine learning you don't have to tell algorithm like if it is linear aggregation or something like that it will do it automatically and it will find automatically if there is something unusual does that answer your question